not when you're doing a home design show. No, because you're actually no. doing the work. Yes. They call you in as the DIY girl because you, in fact, know how to DIY. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know what that stood for back in the day, but thank you for helping me. <laughs> yeah, um, as we know now. Right? Um, and so, and then it was like, okay, the market had taken, you know, a turn in 2008, and I was like, well, this is not quite what I thought it was going to be when I was well, five here, years old. Let's talk about this. So, like, yeah. do, you, when, do you remember that day, though, when you woke up and you were like, I know I want to be something different? Like, did you, do you remember that day or that time in your life? Did you envision yourself speaking on stage? Did you envision yourself on TV? What was that day like for you? There are crystal clear moments in a, in a specific song that was playing where I See? dropped to I my knees. Right. And it wasn't that long ago. So after moving out of real estate and into then full-time TV, live TV, and then doing yeah. that since 2010, I thought that was it. And then I went to a Tony Robbins event called Date with Destiny. Ah, have you been? I haven't been to that one, but I have been to about three of his others. Okay, so I so walked on fire or on the coals. I'm a fire walker I'm right a here. I'm a fire walker. Me too. That's a big thing. And then as you realize, oh, that's just a small metaphor for that you can do anything you put your mind to. Right? Yeah, People totally. People think that's the thing. So Date with Destiny was actually not long ago. It was only a year and a half ago, December. But before that, you had a lot of success, though. I mean, yeah. you're, you're so... So what happened before, like when did you first realize that you wanted to be on TV and, 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 and how was, what was that? I mean, it's kind of a big thing. You're it seems like it, right? It's so funny and it, it seems like it. And that's the thing is like, we need to honor and celebrate that that was a big win because it was a, a very mm -hmm. clear vision that I had because I thought that getting on to TV as a host, a TV host, oh, and you I know, know this world, would allow me to say what I wanted, when I wanted, how I wanted, and where Doesn't. I wanted, but it didn't. I know, and you're so right. And so here so I right. was, it looked glamorous, and I'm making money, and I'm hobnobbing with the A-listers on the red carpet, yep. and I'm like, why does this not light my soul up? Yep. Right? And so it was then to so just move forward. So I did it for all those years, live TV, which there's just no other medium that could be that valuable, right? So you can just let it rip in real time. I mean, that is cool. Yeah. But it was in December of 2017 where I realized that is not it. I'm made for so much more. I want to be myself. And that moment is when I heard Sia's chandelier drop to my knees on day four, the values day of Date with Destiny. And for those who are not familiar, um, they may have seen the Netflix uh, documentary, I'm Not Your Guru. Yes, yeah, I've watched so, that a few times. Right, me too. And when I had seen it, then it went to the top of my bucket list. Most people want to go to Bora Bora or Fiji. And I was like, I oh, know, I want to go to Date with Destiny. Yeah. Because it's, it's an investment. And it was the moment where I got my life revealed to me. I woke up. So that was that watershed moment, that demarcation of I look at my life as before and after. So what's happened since, because I actually discovered that I was enslaved by this blind spot of what would others think if I did that, if I said that, or if I launched that, I was still subscribing to the photoshopping of the post, right, the perfect composition, the making it look perfect, mm -hmm. right? That's what we all mm -hmm are just sometimes unconscious Well, we're too. very conditioned, especially I think our generation, we're very conditioned to think that, that everything has to be perfect. Because I know like you, being a host, people think, oh my gosh, every, you know, the things that you do, this and that on TV, but really being a host is you're given your script, you're told where to sit, the makeup is <laughs> not even yours, how to wear your hair, what color to have it, what to wear, what's where your to size? sit, how to, what's your, oh, women, that's I mean, a big deal, right? About, you know, yes. And we're it was just, just gonna crazy. fit you, wardrobe fittings. I used to like <laughs> panic, going, ah. Or how about even just like six months ago, the wardrobe um, person at Extra sent me home with like seven dresses and she was like, you can take any of these for a while. Not one fit. And I'm like, been, that's, yes. that's crazy, right? She was not compensating for the chest. <laughs> anyway, that's what it is. <laughs> How I know, I've right? been there, I right. still am there. Okay, me too, but I honor that now because now I love myself so much, but it took me a minute to get yeah. there. And what I realize is it's, at that Date with Destiny event where I was like, oh my God, I didn't know how much I was depending on others' approval. And that finally, You're conditioned, I, right? Though. And You're it doesn't matter what it is—the husband, the house, yep. the passport stamps, the children in that school, in yep. that car, right? And that's what it looks like as the highlight reel on social media. But most people are deeply unfulfilled. And so when I realized, why was I with all the success and the dream show? I wanted to be on extra for ten years, never came close, so let it go. And then it found me, you know, many, many years later, and I've been on for two and a half years now, and I love that segment, by the way. It didn't show up the way that I thought it would, but it's better because it's only an hour a week and it provides me all this freedom. But at this date with Destiny, I, was real, I just realized, oh my gosh, if I know that I'm made for more and I want to impact lives and it's not about me and what it looks like and being perfect, right? then what would that look like? What would that version of myself do if I didn't give an F about what others thought? 
even the thought of that was so scary, like sweat started to roll down my back, oh, right? I know. Because it yeah. was like, oh, no, 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 you can't do that, you can't say that, and so. It's hard. Whew, and then once you yeah. just move through, mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna let it roll, because if I don't, 10 years from now, I'm gonna be miserable and I'm always gonna be hiding, and I know this to be true, and this is like my favorite saying, that I catch myself saying when I'm conscious, and it's like, nobody is looking for perfect, everybody's looking for real. Right. More now mm -hmm. than ever. ever. Thank goodness. Right? But it's hard, because we've been conditioned as hosts to not show that real side. Right. And even sometimes I know when I get vulnerable and I put it out there, some of my fans don't like it, because they're used to seeing the other side. And so what do you do with that? Well, when you see a nasty comment or someone unfriends you, how oh, do you respond? No, I, I don't even care anymore. See, me too, but in the beginning, you yeah, did, right? I did in the beginning. Yeah. I don't care. It's, I mean, whatever. <laughs> I'm at the point now, either you like me, you don't, and if you don't, oh well, not everybody's going to love But you. see, that's the life of a yeah. master, Tanya. And, and see, and that's something that people who, who aren't where you are would give anything to know how to do. That's, tr that's, right? that's, that's true. Right? That is huge. Yeah. It's like when someone, I was recently interviewed somewhere and, and they said, well, what do you do when you get like a negative comment in your social? And I'm like, I ignore it. Yeah, like, first cares. of all, hurt people, it. hurt people. Yeah, well, I delete it yeah. and then I'll usually block it and I'll blame, because I'm like, they're just going to come my, back. Yeah. But I don't ever go after them. No. And then I don't think about it for longer than one second because it's not about me, it's about them and their journey. Yeah. You know, hurt people hurt people. And so the more that I just blaze my own trail and live unapologetically and authentically and mm -hmm. vulnerably, and I like to do that in real time on live video. That's been my whole thing. And so as a result of going to Date With Destiny, it was like, okay, launch that podcast and let's talk about the biggest blind spot that I think so many people have, which is this obsession on others and wanting the approval, and wanting to be liked. And so um, then we just moved forward and it's just been this incredible journey. And that's just launched into this mega speaking career and impacting tens of thousands of lives. And it's mostly, the impact is through live video. People letting themselves be seen and having that courage to know that you're worthy to hit that go live button on your Facebook page, right? Yeah, or Instagram, right? now they have it there too. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's so funny, and it's like, ooh, but what would I say, or what would I do, or what if I don't feel right. good or look good? It's like, that's the moment to just come on and say that. Well, how do you, uh, how do you figure out what you're going to say when you press that button? Well, at this point, I now have so much practice Content. doing it. Yeah, but yeah. I'll tell you, I, I didn't start here. I was the judgy eye roller like a year and three months ago with several friends. Jason Goldberg was one of them who were doing the live videos all the time on Facebook. And I'm like, oh my God, he's doing it a lot. He was one of those, like, who does he think he is? But it was half judgy, half like... Wow, that's a little really, envious, a little bit like, a little I wish badass. I could do that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then I Because you know you can. Well, but I yeah. was like, oh, that was like the idea of doing that, even with all this TV under my belt, like thousands and thousands of hours. So it felt scary. Yes. Let's talk. It's so funny because, yeah, I've been on television just like you for so many years. And then all of a sudden, well, for me, I actually walked off of my set the last show I was on. I left. For I read. many reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Yes. My choice. But um, on the other end, I have to say the hardest thing, and I want to know, because I know you had this moment, is then not reading a script, not memorizing it, not, you know, projecting other people's words, but like, now it's social media. How am I going to talk? How am I going to use my words? That was so scary for me. It's still a little bit intimidating. Is it? I know you had that day for you, right? Oh, I still like, do. At, petrified. I still will at <laughs> times. Um, I was interviewed on in a podcast actually the other day by one of my favorite mentors. And when she asked me a particular question, I was like, <gasps> oh, I don't have the answer that I really wished I had for her. But then I was like, oh, but how cool is that? I just shared that. And then I got I got to dig into it, um, mm, but going back right because yeah. then I was like, oh, so I'm uncomfortable. There. So I believe that discomfort is the currency of growth, and I really know that's yeah. true because anything that I'm really proud of or that I'm pretty good at, I once wasn't, including walking, talking, <laughs> riding a bike, <laughs> live TV, podcasting, leading masterminds and coaching programs, speaking on big stages. I, w I sucked in the beginning. I was so terrible at live TV on HSN and QVC in my early days that I was, it was humiliating. I would cry, I'd be in tears every time I'd finish my, oh, I know that my hours. Woo. And I'd be like, I just had to do that in front of millions of people. And so when you continue to show up in the discomfort and you embrace that fear and you embrace the uncertainty, I think that that's where you really condition the courage muscle mm -hmm. that we all have. We can all have a regular conversation in real life why does a live video button have anything to do with us stopping who we really are and letting mm -hmm. that version of ourselves be seen?
But I will say it just requires practice. Consistency is everything. Yeah, so what do you say to people that, because um, I know that you teach people how to be amazing in their videos and how to re really bring out their authentic self. I know you do, you do masterminds now and that's you coach people in that. Um, how, what would you say is the best piece of advice for someone who's like, okay, I ha I'm dying to like figure out my story, my brand, my this, but they have nowhere to start. Oh my God, this is a, this is a really great question um, because it's so simple, it's crazy. Aren't always the biggest truths super simple? So the yeah. first thing that I say is look that camera right in the eye and people are like, what's the eye? What do you mean? <laughs> the lens, where's the lens? Put your finger over what you think is the lens. If you can no longer see yourself, that's, that's the, the lens. lens. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to point at you, but you were getting my point. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Okay. So put to, put, look, your, look that camera right in the eye and then talk to one person. You know that from TV. Like, we all think like we're talking to our entire Facebook feeds as if they're gonna stop everything they're doing and listen to everything that we're saying. They're not. They're not. They might tune in for two seconds and then be the judgy eye roller. That's okay too, right? Or they might, you know, think, oh wow, she's got some value. Wow, look at her, she's cute today. Look at that sweater with those boots. Oh, she's so fly. Yeah, they're not even thinking about sometimes what you're saying. No. Well, sometimes they are, but it's more like it's, all these other things. But it's go. a matter of can you own yourself? And when you can own yourself, it's when you know that you're talking to one person mm -hmm. and you're looking them right in the eye. And then it's also a matter of not about you, it's about other. Right, so I always go off of the seven part framework from Donald Miller, um, which is how to build your story brand. And he always says, don't start with yourself and what you've learned and how you've grown. Start with what you think, the person that you're speaking to, that one person, you know, is it what they're experiencing, their pain, their suffering, their limiting beliefs. And when you can do that, you can connect to anyone. But it really does come down to looking the camera in the eye, putting a smile on your face. You know how it is. Like no one wants to watch like negative, boring energy. So a little smile helps to convey warmth and friendliness um, and something that feels like, oh, I, what is she saying right now? Maybe I'll watch for a second. And then just speaking to one person. And don't get caught up in the content in the beginning. It's irrelevant. Right, right? very irrelevant. And just you're not get gonna, used to speaking. Right, and you're not gonna yeah. get that six-figure career that I built last year in eight months with just Facebook Live, just coming out once a week overnight. It takes time. You have to just show up consistently and don't make it like, every, you don't stress yourself out by every day. But I think the whole thing about going live is, is a big deal and I always say and I have a live video mastery Academy and um, it's such a fun course and I always say you came in because you thought you were gonna master video but this is actually a personal development course right because you have to master exactly. self yes. owning who you are letting that version of yourself be seen then I don't care what you offer what your product is what your message is you'll be able to connect but it's that piece you know and just practice show up and do it consistently and you'll get better and better and better so, you know, because you, you come across like, oh, you know, well, you're on extra and you're pretty and you've got this. And they, you know, there's people out there that are thinking that, right? And it's they're makeup thinking, and like, good well, lighting, let's just be really clear. <laughs> you have it all going on, but it's all good. But um, what is something that even somebody like you with all of your success is, what are you working on when it comes to yourself right now? Mm, thinking bigger, dreaming bigger. I read a quote the other day that was it, was, it stopped me in my tracks, and it said, it was Tom Bilyeu of Quest. Oh, he's wonderful. He's amazing, right? And I don't really even follow him regularly. No shade on, on him. I just, it just happened to be my feed. It was a gift. I had just finished meditating, and it was a quote where he said, if you don't know exactly, all caps, exactly who you want to be and what you'll be doing in five years, you're already doing it. I was like, oh. Oh, you know what I mean? And so a year and a half ago, I was thinking big, the podcast and launching everything that I wanted to launch, speak when I wanted, where I wanted, how I wanted it, and when I wanted, which is what I'm doing. But now what? Right, you right. Know what so I mean? you hit those marks. Yeah, well, no. So now what? What now about five what? years from now? Right. And what would that require in me? And it was like a massive, deeper belief in myself that I'm capable and I'm not too old. You and I are the same age. Like mm -hmm. sometimes I get caught up in ageism and that oh, I'm. I, for sure. Right, girl? All the time. Right. <laughs> it's just so easy yeah. to. And yet there's such wisdom that comes from a woman who's in her mid 40s and, and who's lived a life and had all these crazy careers and somehow they all connect when you do look back and. And, um, and it was all leading to this moment, but in five years, I also wanna look back on this moment and be like, I designed that, I created that, and I didn't play small. Um, and so yeah, the insecurities, the limiting beliefs of that I can do that, that will come in to get me all the time. You know, does it even matter? Do I have an original thought? And then you look at all the people that we admire. You're like, do they? Right, do they? They right. are an algorithm of their mentors. They so are. Who's putting out original content? 
come on. I mean, sorry, I mean, I know you are, but. <laughs> No, no, no. I, but no, you know what I, I totally mean? am here with you, yeah. But what a beautiful hologram we all are and how much we need each other. And that's why it's like, let's just join forces and link arms and like not take to, try to take all the credit. Let's just have fun with this and like give credit where credit's due. I know, right? Not be yeah. so, uh, so self-absorbed in a way where you can't give a compliment or you can't. Um, I'm sure you've had that experience in your life too. Totally. Where people just weren't able to compliment you and you know you've earned it. Totally. Do you know what I mean we by that? We deflect as humans. And that's that part of like wanting to play small. And and if there's one thing that I could just, this is what I really want to be doing. I want to help people wake up to the truth of who they really are. Mm -hmm. You know, be unapologetic and just go for it. Say it. Ask him out. Ask her out. The one that you're actually attracted to. <laughs> yeah, you know? You're actually attracted <laughs> to. Not Let's the one just where start like, there. Oh, he's kind <laughs> of, yeah, he'll, he'll like me. Yeah, yeah. No, go for the one you like, right? And then be that version of yourself that would attract that. Um, but do you yeah. have any? Um, do you have any favorite favorite sayings or mottos that you live by? Um, well, one of my favorites is Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. um, amongst many, many others. And it is when you trade your expectations for appreciation, your whole freaking world will change instantly. Wow, mm. very nice. I love that. Yeah, we focus so much on what's missing, what's not working, you know, what we want that's not quite there, and we're in such a rush. When we, if we can just reel it back and be so completely grateful for all that's happening in this very moment, I think that's like a, a magical, beautiful life, and we're always fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you mentioned expectations too. I think that when yeah. people have too many expectations, they set themselves up for failure, kind totally. of. Totally. Because I've been there. Yes. We all have. Yes. Right? It's when you kind of don't expect, and then it's a wonderful surprise at the end of the rainbow <laughs> exactly. or the end of the storm, whatever it is. Exactly. You just allow yourself to live in all the blessings that are already here. Yeah. And we can get so caught up in our story. Our parents did this and this is the reason why I'm that. And then he said that or she said that. It's like, well, what about how grateful you can be for all that you have? You know, and then I, I don't know about you, but I'm sure you interview a lot of people. They achieve so much success. Can they enjoy it? Some do, yeah, and some really don't. They're still right. living with the demons that they've had years ago. And so I always speak to those because obviously I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one clients, and mm -hmm. some of them are very successful in business. And, and it's like, can you actually appreciate what you've created and what you've accomplished? Mm -hmm. And so I'm right now I'm really in the space of, yes, I've got the five-year visions, and yes, I don't want to play small, and yes, I know I've, I'm here to help a lot of lives, but I also know that I really want to enjoy what I have and enjoy the spaciousness of this beautiful time called life because it's short and there's a lot going on in my family right now that is like really woken us up to life is so freaking precious. Right, it sure is. You know, I so know. Whew, we waste so much time worrying about what we don't have or what's not quite here or when's it gonna come. We're always living in the future yes. instead of the, the present, I know. Yeah. Um, I'm a big believer that, you know, the past doesn't exist so why are we so caught up in it and yet so many of the us future are. doesn't exist so why do we keep projecting what it's going to be in a negative way if we're yeah. going through that but it's really the present is all we really have yeah. so being present focusing on the present being grateful mm. and um, is very very important especially uh, during certain times of someone's life yeah no matter what where you are in life totally right be grateful be present and yeah yeah, gratitude is, gratitude is, is the elixir. It's everything. It's not easy. It's not easy because you can sometimes get caught up and like, yeah, but I don't have this. I don't have that. But yes, and it's you know. true. But then that puts us into a scarcity mindset, you know. Yeah. And the abundance mindset is, well, what do I have, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, every time I wake up, my one of my morning rituals is a rampage of gratitude, you know, and all the things that I have. And sometimes, honest to God, it's like I am so grateful I don't have to wake up to an alarm clock. I'm so grateful <laughs> I get to wake when my body wants to wake, you know. So That's something nice. that I'm so grateful for every day. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of a big deal. It's Michelle. a big deal. <laughs> I know and I worked so hard to get here yes. and it required a tremendous amount of courage and a lot of faith and a lot of inspired action and that's all it takes. Just move forward every day. Do something toward that which you want. So right now we can see you on Extra mm -hmm. once a week. So what day is that and what time? Uh, that airs on Wednesday nights in the pop-up shop on Extra and Great. syndicated show. So it's, you know, on wherever it is on your local network. Okay. Love that. So uh, tell me about your podcast. Podcast is called The Mindset Mashup, and we release an episode every single Monday. I'd love to have you on. <gasps> yeah, um, it's amazing. On. We bring in, like, amazing game changers in the world of personal Great. development and spiritual growth and success, et cetera. Um, you will be amongst I've your compadres. To it. I've listened to it and it is very, it's, it's, I mean, you have a bazillion followers. So of mm. course it's uh, yeah, you're just, I mean, 
amazing well, what you're doing. Thank you. We pride ourselves on just doing like real talks like this. It's not yeah. necessarily as much of an interview as it is just a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, anywhere online, I'm always offering up a new course in the Live Video Mastery Academy and, and a mastermind every three months. And life is good. Life is really, really good. good. Nice. Yeah. And where are you are going to do you have any speaking engagements lined I up? I do. I'm flying up uh, to do an event with Jack Canfield. Oh, um, wonderful. Chicken Soup for the Soul Success Principles um, next month in Portland. Um, I just had the honor of interviewing him, which was such a such a like meeting your mentor moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's coming up. And then I'm flying to London in the fall to do another health summit with biohackers and that really cool stuff. Anyway, there's a lot of there's a lot of fun stuff. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I'm like, oh, oh you're yeah, welcome. That's coming yeah. up. Well, you, we can learn about more about you on your website too. Yes. And I love your website. It's Thank it's you. a beautiful site and it's very easy to navigate. So if you're interested, it really is though. <laughs> that was, thank you, Delia. She helped me on that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love it. So if you want to learn more about Michelle um, Soro, definitely go to her website. Check her out on Instagram because everything is there as well. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. And watch Extra. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, I love that show too. It's so thank great. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. My honor. All right. So if you guys want to binge watch all of the episodes, go to lifemasterstv.com and you can also go to the EverTalk app on Apple TV and on Roku. And so make sure that you check out the uh, I, the podcast, the Life Masters podcast on iTunes as well. And make sure you listen to them and give us a rating and write up something nice about the show. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thanks for listening. Yay! Yay! Thank you. That was great. Thank you. That was awesome.